Once you've received REDCap access, please go to the REDCap website for your institution. Once there, type in your username and the password given to you when your account was created. When you click Login, you will be asked to do a two-step verification for REDCap. Since this is your first time logging in, please send yourself an email as your two-step verification method. An email from REDCap will be sent immediately as there is only a two-minute leeway to enter that code into the REDCap website. On all subsequent logins, you can set up your Microsoft Authenticator app. To do this, click on Profile in the upper right corner. Once you log in, you see the My Projects page. When you start a new project, click on New Project. Type in the title of your project. If the red cap is for an MUE, select Quality Improvement. If the red cap is for your longitudinal project, select Research. The next box to check will most likely be Clinical Research Study or Trial. Whether this is for your MUE or your longitudinal project, make sure the radio button says Empty Project, then send the request. Once your project has been approved, it will appear under My Projects. Click the hyperlink to enter into your project to begin designing it. REDCap will automatically default you to the Project Setup page. The first thing we want to do under Main Project Settings is enable the survey option. This will allow you to bookmark the project link and complete it without needing to log into REDCap. Once you've clicked Enable, click Undone. The next step is designing your data collection instrument. One thing I highly encourage you to do before you start creating your form is to have your protocol and data dictionary open on your computer so you can copy and paste information directly into REDCap. Click Online Designer to get started. Once you are in the Online Designer, you will see this screen. Let's first rename Form 1. Click Choose Action. Copy and paste your project name into the box, then click Save. Next, you will enable this new instrument or data collection form as a survey. Go ahead and click Enable. What you will see is all of the details for the survey. Don't edit this information until you're done building your REDCap. Click Save to exit and return to the online designer. Let's start adding data fields. Click on your instrument name to get started. The record ID is a default field, so leave this field alone. The first data field I recommend to add is the patient's MRN to help avoid duplicating patient entries. REDCap is HIPAA compliant, so we can put PHI in here as long as we mark it as such to avoid exporting it later. To add the MRN, click Add Field. Next, select Text Box to free text in the patient's MRN. Name the field the same name that you have in your data dictionary. In this case, I'll label it as MRN. I'll also label the variable name the same way, as well as making this field a required field to ensure that you don't forget to enter this field before submitting the form. Label this field as a patient identifier, then click Save. Once the MRN field is in, you can begin adding in your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Adding these criteria in counts as your screening log, which will aid you in determining how many patients were screened, excluded, and why they were excluded. Unlike the MRN field, these data fields will be yes-no fields. Click Add Field, copy and paste in your first inclusion criteria. When typing in your variable name, REDCap will not allow you to use spaces between words and will limit your characters to 26. Therefore, abbreviate what you feel comfortable abbreviating and use the underscore symbol instead of spaces. I recommend requiring all data fields to help you remember to complete each one. Additionally, in the field note, I suggest leaving yourself some instructions on what answer you're looking for. I like to put must be yes to include for all of my inclusion criteria and must be no to include for all my exclusion criteria. Now let's move to entering in the rest of our variables. There are multiple types of fields you can select for each variable. However, you should be selecting the type of field that's appropriate based on your data dictionary. Let's run through an example. The first variable I'm going to enter is age. I click Add Field, then select Yes, No. I then type age less than 90 years, followed by my variable name as age underscore less 90y. Make the field required. In the field note, I'm going to copy and paste the definition from my data dictionary. Click Save. The next field I add is age, again, but this time as a text box. Here I say the variable name is age, 
Under the validation, I select integer and input 18 as my minimum age and 89 as my maximum age. I make the field required and add in the definition for my data dictionary into my field note, then click Save. Next, let's walk through branching within REDCap. Branching is just a fancy way of saying a field will only show up if certain criteria are met. Let's start with the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Age is usually the biggest for getting to include or exclude a patient, so we will leave that as the first criteria. For the second inclusion and exclusion data field, click on the green diverting arrows in the top left of that box. I'm going to get this window pop up. I personally find the drag and drop logic builder to be much more user friendly to use, so we will use that. Remembering that my inclusion criteria should be yes to include the patient, I know which variable to click and drag over to the second box. When you're sure of your branching logic, click Save. Because this REDCap is enabled as a survey, we get a nice alert saying branching throws off the numbering. Just click Close. What I highly encourage you to do is to have one more field that says Included or something similar. That way, when you do branching off of this, it's only one variable that you're including here. This just makes the rest of your criteria easier to branch. Label the field label as included, same with the variable name, make it required and click save. Now that we have that, we can update the rest of the branching criteria for the other inclusion and exclusion criteria. What you will notice for the included field, as we drag and drop over, that I need to have all of the inclusion and exclusion criteria appropriately added and clicking all the below are true, which is an AND statement, instead of any of the below are true, which is an OR statement. As you move to the actual patient characteristics, you can now just branch using the word included, yes. For me, I like to have section headers in my data collection form to visually break up the sections. For example, I would love to separate out the MRN from my first inclusion criteria by inserting a section header. So I'm going to click Add Field, then click Begin New Section. Here I can type in the name of the section and then click Save when I'm done. You now can see a physical separation in the two variables. You always want to work smarter, not harder. For example, the REDCap library has data collection forms already created for many scoring tools. Return to the list of instruments and click Import. From there, I'm going to type in Charleston for Charleston Comorbidity Index and hit either Enter or Search the Library. There are two different ones here. Click on one of them, then click Import into my REDCap project. You're going to agree and then click Add. Then click Return to Previous Page. You'll now see this instrument show up underneath your first data collection instrument. Sticking with the theme of working smarter and not harder, let's review how to copy a field. Here's the Empiric Antibiotics field. There are a lot of options to pick from, and I would hate to have to rewrite all of this into a definitive antibiotics field. I just click the icon that looks like two pieces of paper, and then click Copy Field. Now I just need to change the field label and variable name to Definitive Antibiotics. I now have the exact same field, thereby saving myself a lot of time. Once you are done building your REDCap, you're going to want to check and make sure that all of your branching logic works. On the Operation menu on the left side of the screen, click Survey Distribution Tools, then click Open Public Survey. This should pop out a separate browser tab that looks like a prettier, user-friendly survey to complete. We're going to click on Yes for the age greater than 18 inclusion criteria. Here you can see that the logic worked. If I change this to say no, REDCap no longer displays additional options, meaning that the logic still worked. If you don't fill out all of the required fields, like I'm doing here, when you click Submit, you'll notice that REDCap warns you that you missed filling out some fields. This is your double check to ensure you filled out all the fields you needed to. Click OK to return to the survey to fill out the fields you missed. Once you fill out all the fields, click Submit. You'll have a standard message at the end that we can edit later to again work smarter and not harder. Next, you'll need to add the rest of your research team members to your REDCap. In order to do this, on the operation menu on the left side of the screen, click on User Rights. Begin by typing in the name of a team member. Once you identify their profile, click their name, then click Add with Custom Rights. Please ensure that the following boxes are checked. Project Design and Setup, User Rights, Survey Distribution Tools, Create, Rename, and Delete Records, View and Edit, and then Full Data Set under the Data Export Rights. Once you've done this, click Add User. 
To edit user privileges, just left click on the username and select Edit User Privileges. You can also remove users from your project in this same screen. Once your changes are made, click Save Changes. One of the last things we have to do is update our survey. For your first instrument, click Survey Settings. The screen changes to let you edit all the options for the survey. You can leave yourself survey instructions if you want, or just leave it blank. Once you've done that, scroll down to the option just above the Survey Termination option section that says Allow Save and Return Later option. Change that to Yes. Since you are entering MRNs, please do not check the box saying you don't want to return code to help protect the patient's PHI. Under the Survey Termination options, click the box that says Auto Continue to the next survey and enter the code for including patients in the box. Once you've done this, click Save Changes at the very bottom of the screen. Next, enable the Charleston instrument as a survey. Again, determine if you want survey instructions and edit that box. Scroll down and ensure that the Save and Return Later option for respondents says yes. For the survey termination options, click on the radio button that says to redirect to a URL. In that box, paste in the URL for your first instrument name to help automatically start fresh on a new patient, then click Save Changes. Once your surveys are ready to go, click on Project Setup. Next, click I'm Done for all of the remaining boxes as, we, as we've completed all that we needed to. When you click to move your project into production, you might get a pop-up that will ask you if you want to keep or delete your data. As this data is just our test, click Delete All Data, then click Yes, Move to Production Status. REDCap will again make sure you know you're deleting data. Click OK. Your project is now ready to have patient data entered.